What's up everyone? Welcome back to another video. For those of you who don't know, I'm Tyler and on this channel I make automotive content and yes, it feels so weird to be doing this intro because for the last three videos we've been working on my Karma Cayman. If you guys aren't familiar with that, click in, the, click in this right hand corner. You guys catch up with that. Currently that Karma Cayman kit is one of one in Northern America. Second kit ever produced in the entire world and it's very exciting. So click, click in the right hand corner. <coughs> and today we're taking a break on the Karma Cayman because I got sick and no it's not what you're thinking people still now today can just get regular sick okay people can still get it's a thing it's a thing I promise so excuse me if I don't sound enthusiastic or if I start dying halfway through this video because I am sick today what we're gonna be doing is going over something very controversial by the title of this video, you already know, the world's cheapest turbo. Is it the world's cheapest turbo? I have no idea. I'm probably just gonna put that in because it's clickbait, but this is a $250 turbo. No way, no way, no how, you can't, you can't convince me. It's not gonna be quality, or is it? I don't know, I don't know. Today, we're gonna find out. So, a little backstory, why am I doing this? For those of you who know, I built my Genesis Coupe on this channel. Thing makes 450 wheel horsepower. Insane. First time around though, I did it very cheaply and I definitely paid the price because parts were not quality, parts broke, and I had to rebuy parts, spending double the money to buy the quality parts. When? Max Peating Rods hit me up and said, hey Tyler, do you want to do a review of our products? I was like, definitely, definitely not. Out of curiosity, I took a look on their website and I was like looking around and I saw this turbo. Okay, $250 and I'm like, there's no way this thing can be quality. And I'm scrolling down the page and then I see they have a two year warranty on this thing. A two year warranty on a $250 turbo. My turbo, my cheap turbo that freaking blew up last time was double that price. It was almost 500 bucks. Excuse Mushu if he starts making a disturbance like he is right now. He's just a cute bug doing cute bug things. Okay. Sorry. Knowing that previously, I mean, I didn't have a warranty on my $500 turbo. I really wish that I did at the time because I don't have money to spend to get the new. And then I, you know, I had to do it anyways. But if you're trying to boost on a budget, is $250 worth it? Is this thing even going to be remotely good? What type of quality can we expect from a replica? We'll say replica. This is their generic turbo. What will it do? On their website, they claim to be on par with my Garrett Turbo, which is currently a Garrett GT35R. So this is the equivalent, quote unquote, to that. So today, we are going to deep dive into this. We're going to do a full unboxing and unbiased review. Though Max Peating Rods did send me this turbo for free, I'll let you know if I think it's quality and if I, and if I don't. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so, without further ado, let's unbox this bad boy and see what we got. Let's learn together because I have no idea what this looks like. Are you doing little cute buggy things? turbo out of the box and inside the box a little surprising to me first things first that I want to state say good on max peating rods because they supply you gaskets this is a t3 gasket this is also the exhaust gasket for the turbo housing as well as an oil feed line gasket in here three gaskets wow look at that as well as we'll get some branding in here max peating rods shout out max peating rods for uh, supplying the turbo for this review today hopefully we don't learn anything drastic about it so right out of the gate, packaging is pretty good too. So let's just rip this open. I'm a little surprised out of the gate, but quality is a little bit better than I had expected. Why are you digging on my couch? <laughs> Stop. Stop. Stop trying to bite me. Okay, so right, Mushu. Right away, you can definitely tell the difference between a quality turbo and a good turbo purely by the finish right here. You can tell. They tried, definitely. They even have some polishing on the metals down here, uh, which is good. Even right here, this 
the housing is you know machined pretty well um, I, as I say that you can definitely see inside these holes I, I don't know if you could see this on camera but on a good quality turbo um, you will not see any scoring inside these holes right here all these holes definitely have scoring inside it which have like loose chunks of metal so when air comes in here and this does start to compress the air I guarantee you that some of these chunks will fall off into the turbo um, I'm not saying that this is making this unusable definitely you could probably hone these out and get all that out I'll say that but the fit and finish of this isn't too bad I don't see any scoring on the inside of here. The wheel looks pretty nice. Spin this thing around. The turbine spins pretty well. It looks pretty good. As far as I can tell right now, I know it's brand new out of the box. It doesn't feel like it has any shaft play, which is good. For those of you who don't know, when you're talking about a turbo, shaft play is this lateral or up and down movement, any type of movement you really don't want. This really doesn't have any. Typically, there's tiny, tiny amounts of play when you first open a brand new turbo because oil hasn't filled inside this, and uh, the viscosity of the oil should then take all the, the shaft play out but I don't I don't feel any so that's pretty good that's good signs that this will probably spool properly um, the big things that I'm concerned about though is the honing on the inside of this for the most part my initial impression isn't that um, anything is too bad on here now I'm gonna pull this thing apart and see what this kind of looks like on the inside the biggest thing that I know on cheap turbos is these compressor housings usually aren't the greatest, especially with the threads on the back side of these turbos. Um, so what will happen is these bolts on the back side, I don't know if you can see, have a high tendency to one, strip out, so this will get loose, you will lose boost pressure. Two, what this will then cause is this compressor housing not to sit completely flush, and when it does that, then the compressor wheel will start, start to score the inner inner housing right here and then also create shaft blade that that's a huge you know no go right there um, that kill your turbo pretty quickly something to look out for definitely would suggest probably lock tightening these um, I don't think I would trust these these bolts right out of the gate um, on either side on the turbo side on the hot side or on the compressor side so before we pull this apart I also want to show you guys on the box this is the equivalent to a GT35R. The technical name for the Garrett is a GT3582. That's the turbo that I have. This is also a GT3582. Commonly, commonly referred to as a GT35R or a GT35. Well, these are torqued on here pretty good, actually. So I'm going to retract my initial statement of saying that these are all going to be loose. I would still suggest pulling these out um, because you're going to have to clock your turbo anyways most likely when you get this. Um, is to pull these out, Loctite them or a high temperature Loctite, whatever you need to do. and Rego over all of them because all of these weren't all torqued the same. Okay, then we have the compressor side. This thing should pop off pretty easily. There we go. Okay, so I mean, as you guys can see on the inside, there are some scoring. Garrett Turbo or anything like that, you definitely won't see any of the scoring or any of this stuff on the inside. Can't I can't say right now if definitively if that's gonna affect your performance or not or the longevity of the turbo, but you definitely wouldn't see that on a Garrett Turbo. You can also see, I don't know if you guys can see this, some of these edges right here aren't perfectly cut. And so you can see there are some little flakes of metal, which definitely, if that goes into the turbo, even though they are very, very small, um, it will be detrimental to your turbo and the longevity of the turbo. And as I said before, those ports, um, I can definitely see now, they do go into the turbo. Uh, the right here is a little um, vent, as you guys can see. And those ports on the front definitely go all the way to the inside, so you definitely are going to want to want to get those machined out. There's some work that needs to happen to maximize the lifespan of this turbo. Um, obviously, we don't know how long this uh, the internals on this will live. Something that will be interesting as we move on to the exhaust side, right here in this bag, I have a legitimate OEM. I just put it in this bag because I've already used them. Is a legitimate bracket for uh, the Garrett GT35R for the rebuild kit because um, I rebuilt my turbo housing, which will be interesting to see if these fit this, because that means they might actually be the same 
specs size wise right and we'll see if these bolts work because if these bolts work maybe you just buy the gt35r rebuild kit and use the actual gear bolts these exhaust bolts were definitely not as tight as the compressor housing bolts so again my suggestion still stands don't use this right out of the box if you're going to get it for sure go through all these bolts and okay again no shaft play it seems good so the core will say this turbo core is pretty for the most part this bill of wheel this wheel looks pretty good i don't see anything wrong with the wheel or the machining of the wheel it, everything on here looks pretty good the exhaust housing is definitely much better than the compressor housing i really don't see anything uh, wrong with this uh, what i'm noticing is the exhaust housing and the compressor housing are both um, both the same size and what I will say is this is the Garrett the legitimate Garrett let's see if we can line these things up they look like these two fit together definitely looks like it's the same specs this probably for sure could work here's the Garrett bolt look how long this is here's the max peeing rod bolt it's a pretty big difference are these the same thread let's find out interesting the one that I chose is the one right here down next to the flange and if you look in here inside the metal at the end kind of pushes it away so that's pretty interesting to note if you wanted to maybe you couldn't use it on this bottom one but for sure on these top ones let's see it does go all the way down <laughs> on the rest of these interesting so like i said there are some machine qualities of this that aren't exactly to par with the rest of uh the actual garrett manufactured turbo not only it's literally just this one bolt hole that doesn't make it all the way down correctly i wonder i wonder if that's the same on the compressor housing so there's only one on the compressor housing that will actually work which is this top one because it's the only one that goes all the way through the rest of these holes are too shallow to use the stock garrett bolts granted this one is an exhaust housing bolt so take that with a grain of salt basic information when you're putting these turbos back together any kind of turbo there will be a beveled side and a flat side you always want to put the flat side down Yes, little buggy. Yes. You gonna watch that build the turbo? So here it is. The Max Painting Rods GT3582. Would I run this on my car? Right out of the box, probably not because I think that there's some work that needs to happen on the compressor side for sure to make sure that there are no metal bits flying into the turbo because um, that's obviously detrimental to the turbo. And also, just to keep this in mind, the, the GT35R, this thing can perform in the realm of like 32 plus PSI. So this is capable, theoretically, of 700, 600 horsepower range cars. My car makes 450, that's on low boost, that's 24 PSI. So this thing is way, quote unquote, this turbo should perform well into the 500, 600 range. So would I be using this in a high horsepower and high boost application probably not if you're trying to shoot for the 400 range maybe maybe this is realistic it's cheap it says it has a two-year warranty if you do these modifications to make sure that everything is honed yourself maybe it might work it might i don't know how long it's going to live it says it has a two-year warranty maybe you save that money huge shout out to max peeing rods again for sending me this turbo again this is non-biased this quality of this turbo actually surprised me i think there's a lot of good things that they're doing for relatively cheap like this is a significantly different price point than my turbo you're talking about 250 bucks here as opposed to 1800 dollars. okay so that's a drastically different price point how would this perform i have no idea um but from the machine quality it's not it's not horrific, okay? So yes, there are some things that need to, to happen on this and some things that I suggest changing out, like OEM Garrett exhaust bolts. I don't know what else to tell you. If this is all your budget calls for, send it. Get it. It's cheap. It might perform. I'm filming this video to put this out here for full transparency for you guys to know. This option is out here. It's a $250 alternative to my $1,800 turbo. That's huge. Am I by any means telling people to buy these cheap alternative turbos as opposed to an original manufacturer? Not at all. Because the longevity of the Garrett, obviously, quality is much better. 
um, and you get what you pay for. Not to say that you can't get one of these perform for a really long time and live. That's definitely, uh, that's going to be it for me. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Next week we should definitely be back in the shop working on the Cayman once again. Hopefully. Hopefully I'm not still sick. And Mushu, Mushu, get your little paws off my stuff. Hey, hey. Yup. <laughs> That's not for you. None of these are for you. They're, they're not, they're not, they're not for you. They're not for you. That's a, that's my camera lens, you turd. Go. Go. These aren't for you. These aren't for you. Down. Push it down. Links will be down below. Check them out if you're interested in this turbo. If you guys want to, comment down below if you want me to, if you want to see me put this on my car or somebody else's car. If you guys want to see it, I guess we can put it on and dyno it and see what it does. Catch you guys next week where we're working on the camera again. Peace.